Welcome to worship at St. Philip Lutheran Church here in Dublin, California. We are in the, the Pentecost, or the Sundays after Pentecost season, and uh, it's a time that we, we look at, at our, our Christian life, and, and today we're looking at, the, the, well, the title of the sermon is A Matter of Life and Death. Well, let us begin our, our worship this morning by singing our opening hymn. beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Turn to me and be saved, says the Lord, for I am God and there is no other. If we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
take a moment for your self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have lived for ourselves, denied our relationship with you, excluded ourselves from the family. We are helpless and alone. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and renew us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Now the absolution. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We turn to God's word. First reading comes to us from Jeremiah chapter 28, beginning with the fifth verse. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet in the presence of the priests and of all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you from, and, and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of the Lord of, of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes to us from Romans chapter 7, beginning with the first verse. Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives? For a married woman is bound by, her, by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another while another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin, for I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, procured in me all kinds of covetousness. For apart from the law, sin, is, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive, and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin seized an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin 
producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading comes to us from Matthew chapter 10, beginning with the 34th verse. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against his mother-in-law. And a person's enemies would be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. for the sermon comes from our epistle reading from chapter uh, 7 of Romans. I read the first and the fourth verses again. Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, 
that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. Then verse 4, Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. This is our text. In 1977, and I read this, this article to you because it is fascinating, but in 1977, 20-year-old Colleen Stan was traveling from her home in Eugene, Oregon to Northern California to attend a birthday party. Her mode of transport was hitchhiking. And she turned down two rides before getting in the car with 23-year-old Cameron Hooker, his wife Janice, and their baby. Within hours, Cameron put a knife to her throat and threatened to kill her. Colleen was locked in a coffin-like box for 23 hours a day underneath the couple's bed for seven years. She was removed from the box only to be reported, repeatedly raped and tortured. Colleen was told that a group called The Company would kill her if she escaped, and she was made to sign a slave contract. It was fear of the company that kept her from seeking help. Colleen said that her faith in God and belief in a chance of escape helped her survive. Her greatest fear was the company, which Cameron reinforced daily. To avoid painful punishment, Colleen tried to comply with her captor's commandments which later led to her being allowed to go out to jog, work in the yard, care for the family's children in the mobile home, and help him big, uh, build bigger accommodations like an underground dungeon for more slaves. Even with an open door neighbor and telephone, she made no attempt to escape, according to Colleen, it was her fear of the company that kept her from seeking help. In 1983, Colleen was allowed to leave the house, getting a job as a motel maid, eventually getting the courage to tell the police who she was. Hooker was sentenced to 104 years in prison, where he remains to this day. Colleen recently spoke about her time in captivity, saying, she has lived a happy life since. Your life is just kinda in limbo when you're in captivity. And once you get that freedom back and you have that choice again, it's just like the gates open, she said, and you just run for it. Why tell this story? Because I believe it's a great way to illustrate what Paul is talking about in our text. Paul says, in verse 1, or do you know, brothers, for I'm speaking to those who know the law, the, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. The thing you may not realize right away in this text is what Paul ta is talking about when he says living. It is not a life you necessarily want. Paul illustrates this in verse 5 when he says, for while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions arose, aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. There are many who live under the law. When you live under the law, you also live under the sentence of that law. Think back to Colleen. She lived under a law. To break the law, she was under meant consequences. In the article I read, it said, to avoid painful punishment, Colleen tried to comply with her captor's commandments. I think we can agree that Colleen, for Colleen, it was a no-win situation. We are, by our sinful nature, all sinners with a binding contract to keep the, the impossible law for which there is no escape and the wages of sin is death. 
It comes then as no surprise that sinners have no love for the law, especially the law of God. All men are born sinners, dead in their trespasses. They hate God and his law. Where we read in Ephesians, and you were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passion of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were the nature, by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. The natural man cannot understand it and seeks actively to oppose and overthrow it. It says, for the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Unbelievers disdain the law of God, and it's not surprising. Note, however, that Paul is saying that the law, or is, is not saying that the law is bad, just the opposite. He says, so the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, um, and, and righteous, and good. He says this because the law of God teaches us what God's will is. However, with this knowledge, we learn that we are all sinful and cannot save ourselves. Listen to what Paul uh, uh, says in verse 7. Yet, if, if it had been or not been for the law, I would have not known sin, for I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said you shall not covet. I love how Paul chooses that commandment, you shall not covet. As an example, we in the United States have many laws on the books, some which make no sense. I'm not aware of any that have to do with coveting, this because it is a sin of the mind. How are we to know that this is a sin other than to look at God's holy law? Why is it a sin? Because it leads to both a loose trust in God and may lead to a physic for us to physically take what is our neighbor's. The law of God points our sin, points out our sin, and we would never have recognized as such apart from his revelation. And so the law is good, but we cannot be saved by the law. The law Colleen in our initial story had over her what, or, or that she was under was not good, yet she lived under it for seven long years she lived out of fear. One day, Colleen was able to die to that law. In her words, your life is just kind of in limbo when you're in captivity and you get the freedom back and you have that choice again. It's just like the gates open and you just run for it. This is what Paul meant when he said in verse um, for likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit of, for God. We, through our baptism, have died to that law, and now we live anew in Christ. The righteousness of Jesus Christ overthrows and overcomes the sin of Adam and its consequences for all who believe in Christ by faith. Thanks be to God that we have a Savior 
whose own perfect life and sacrificial death broke the power of the law that he had over the, our old sinful nature by grace through faith. Faith in the finished work of Christ of, on Calvary alone could break that binding contract this, uh, between the sinner and the law. Only the shed blood of our Redeemer, Redeemer is able to sever the condemning power which the law has over the old man. Only our Savior Jesus Christ can pay the penalty of the law on our behalf and break forever the con contractual power the law exercises over our fallen nature. When Christ died on the cross, he died in our place. First, to pay the price of our sins. Second, to release us from the power that the law exercised over our old man, our old sinful nature. When Jesus offered up his own life on our behalf, he took upon himself our punishment for our many sins. He took away death. His death paid the price for our sins and broke the power of sin in our lives. But his life also severed, or severed our fallen nature from the righteous requirements of the law and the eternal punishment that it imposes. It was crucified with Christ on the cross. Through Christ, we have been released from the contractual bondage to the law, having died to that by which we were bound, so that in Christ we are set free to serve in newness of the spirit and not bound to old, the oldness of the letter of the law. We might say that the revolution, um, as we celebrate it, the revolution from, from England was, was to break uh, from, um, as it was to, to break from, from England, that it is another example of how the old law is gone and the new freedom is ours. Our independence is in Christ who has freed us. In an interview nearly 40 years after her abduction, Colleen, from our story, bravely explained how she learned or leaned on faith and her family to reclaim her identity. We have so much more as we have the Holy Spirit to thank for our rescue and have the identity as sons and daughters of the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Amen. Now, the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. In a future sermon here, I'm going to ask you each Sunday in July to begin the practice of praying for the members of St. Philip. We're going to talk about prayer in a few weeks, and I want everyone that uh, is, is part of the, the congregation to begin praying, whether you take a directory or the prayer list, um, and just uh, uh, on a regular basis um, pray for the membership by name of, of St. Philip. We continue as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Father, we praise and thank you for this land of plenty and liberty. Daily, we have the opportunity to celebrate new evidence of your eternal love, which was once and for all brought into focus in the life and death of Jesus, your son. Let us become more conscious, conscious that all our good comes from you living in and with us, but especially help us to go with joy, to live with the good news that you bless us daily in endless ways. Then our neighbor will have the good news that Jesus lived and even now lives in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church, Lord Jesus, 
You did not come to call the self-righteous, but sinners. And we are sinners. Don't let us overlook the discipline in the way that you want us to follow. Keep us mindful how much we need you all the time. And help us show others that they need you too. For the renewal of life that leads to the abundant life only you can give. May we daily treat each other as forgiven sinners, daily forgiving one another too, and encouraging one another with lives that are radiant with love and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We, call for the, we pray for the call process. We pray for the call committee to not grow weary in, in the work that they do and that the entire church here at St. Philip will be able to see God's hand working to bring us a future pastor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and our leaders. O oh God of the nations, we thank you for the freedoms we enjoy in this country, especially the freedom of worship that uh, of you without fear. Bless us as we celebrate as a nation the gift of independence. Give wisdom to our leaders so that more freedoms might become available to more people and work within our system of government to bring about more changes that will benefit this segments of society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who protect us. Lead those called to serve through positions of leadership in the government in order that we may live peaceably with all. Direct their words and ways to perform justice in punishing evil and praising good, especially in the defense of the most helpless among us. Bless all industry and those who work, through whom you give us what we need for this body and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill and hurting. Lord Jesus Christ, in order to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, you went about curing every disease and every sickness among the people. Let the good news be made evident now in the lives of your servants for whom our prayers are raised. We pray for those who struggle with cancer. Sharon Hunter, George Mate, Linda Mary Rosier, Marcella Jamello, Brenda Garcia, Jeff Govert, Casey Buddy, Lori Check, Debbie Church, Jacqueline Benson, Tracy Gonzalez, Christy and Bob Ruder, Mark and Cindy Hall, Lori D. Lamont, Shireen S., Baby Asher, Dennis Ackley, Ken Herman, Marlene Diggins, Bev Jotten, Canty D., and for all those suffering from cancer. We pray for healing for, uh, for those with other health issues. George Pickett, Andrea Green, Lois Chick, Kathy Williams, Eunice Sterling, Ernie Louis, Sandy Green, Ron Green, Marcel Francisco, Sandra Boyd, Lori Diagson, Lori Parrish, Sharon Maxwell, Tom C., Pat Galt, Karen Berry, Magino Duke, Chris Sandoval, Barbara Guys, Mark Scissor, Lois Belmezzeri, Len Herrero, Kathy Harrington, Linda Hudson, Debbie Perioski, Amy Chow, Marianne Danabar, Heather Tuzzi, Sue Cromer, Kimberly Murphy, Bob Sampson, Darlene Nash, Doris, Dick Fisher, Dan Foster, Carl Schwann, Ann Colbert, Bob McDowell, Doreen Palmese, Jim Hamilton, Griffin Guise, Benjamin Danabar, Peggy Wolf, uh, for Jim Lair, Misty McJunkin, Bill Currier, uh, Maria Cesia, Sam Lamb. Shine upon them with your goodness, O Lord, and in their darkness let there be light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the families and friends who have lost loved ones. Eternal God, thanks be to you for the victory over death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember all who mourn, comfort them with the promise that you love them with an everlasting love, and you will raise them and all your people from the dead. We pray for solace for the family of Sue Reed and the family of uh, Bob Cannon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and all other prayers we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the benediction. Go out into God's world as those born of water and the spirit. Go as those inspired and excited to know that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. No, in fact, our God sent Jesus into the world so that the world might be saved through him. Go as those living in the mystery of the Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Go knowing you are loved and are called to love each other. Amen. We sing our closing song. that you go in peace and serve the Lord.
Thanks be to God. Amen.